Mary Black. Of the your chairmanship. Now, as has been covered very eloquently by previous speakers, having a GRC actually helps in only a handful of legal situations, such as marriage, taxes, and death. That's it. Nothing to do with prisons. A GRC is not required to update the sex on your passport or your driver's license. A GRC is not required to use single sex, sex spaces, such as toilets or changing rooms. And what we do know is that the current process is deeply invasive, traumatising, unnecessary and dehumanising. There are 17 countries in the last decade that have passed reform of some kind in GRA and there's been no complaints. There is no sound argument for this legislation to be delayed anymore. And yet, if you watch the media, we are constantly bombarded with this idea that there are legitimate concerns. And that's fair. I, I don't doubt there are legitimate concerns out there. But the answers are also out there. So whenever I, I've actually tried to pin down someone as to what is the legitimate concern, it always seems to relate back to this concept of self-ID. So firstly, let me say this. Self-ID is not a new concept. It's the right all of us have to identify who we are. Every time you fill in a form, you are self-identifying your nationality, your sexual orientation, your religion. Every time you go to pee, you are self-identifying which facility best suits your needs. Do I need baby facilities? Do I need a disabled toilet, male or female? Is there a unisex toilet? The Equality Act in 2010 made explicit that trans people also have the right to self-ID. And it laid out exemptions for single-sex providers if any issues were ever to arise. Now, reforms to the Gender Recognition Act do not affect the Equality Act or the exemptions within it. It is not a reason to delay reform. Now, we hear claims that women's rights are being threatened. We've heard that today. Well, I'm a woman. I don't feel threatened. If anything, the thing that makes me feel most threatened is quite often the very aggressive and often male anonymous accounts who proclaim to be defending me from something. Because if we look at what most experienced women's organisations and female service providers, what do they say about GRA reform? Well, we see overwhelming support. We see acceptance. We see active campaigning, not just for GRA reform, but for the trans community more broadly, because they have been dealing with these issues long before the Equality Act was even written. We've had three public consultations showing overwhelming support for reform, particularly amongst women, consistently amongst women. Women's rights are unaffected by GRA reform, and the majority of women know it. But the truth is that the GRA reform has actually only been delayed because it has become a battleground for a proxy war, for a culture war. It's, it's become a breeding ground of disinformation, radicalisation and the rollback of already established LGBT plus rights. The rest of the world is watching right now as Britain is in the full grasp of a moral panic. The fact that Britain has been internationally identified as having a problem with transphobia hasn't come out of thin air. Despite expert opinion, despite mountains of evidence, despite knowing the lived experiences of trans and non-binary people, despite numerous consultations and debates, five years on, we're still dragging our heels. And as legislators, as I said at the start, we have a responsibility to educate ourselves about this stuff. I think five years is more than long enough. As legislators, we have allowed disinformation and confusion to run rife. We've created an environment that allows transphobia and ignorance to thrive. So when we see that hate crimes against LGBT plus people or self-harm has risen in the trans community, can we really go home and say that we are completely blameless? So let me make it as clear as I can. If someone doesn't support self-ID, then their issue is not with the Gender Recognition Act. It's with the Equality Act. And if someone wants to start removing established rights from over a decade ago in the Equality Act, then at least be honest about that. 
Tell people that that's what you're campaigning for. Say it with your chest, but do not dare say that you are doing it in the name of defending women, because it just doesn't stick. Now, if not, if we don't pursue these reforms, all I can say, Chair, is I hope history judges us as harshly as we deserve. <laughs>